Now at 6, we're learning more details and hearing from neighbors about a deadly hostage situation this morning in Brandon. We'll have the latest on that straight ahead. And hurricane season starts today. We're going to talk more about it coming up in a few minutes. But your news at 6 starts right now. This evening, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM 7 News at 6. Good evening, Pine Belt, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Carrie Leggett Brown. We continue to learn more about the deadly officer involved shooting that left one Madison police officer dead and a Brandon police officer in a hospital. Brandon police tells us this began as a domestic dispute between a man and woman and turned into a hostage situation. The 911 call came into Brandon police around 1:20 this morning. They learned that two women were inside the home on Terrapin Drive and a man entered wearing a bulletproof vest, carrying a hunting rifle and a sidearm. One woman was able to get out of the home around the time police got there and police started negotiations and convinced the suspect now identified as 22 year old Gabriel Matthew Wilson to let the other woman out. A few hours later, he started shooting at officers, hitting a Brandon officer in the side. That gunfire is what uh, woke up neighbors. I'm a veteran, so I've been around that kind of stuff, but not like that. It was I've never been that close to it, so it was scary. It was scary. When authorities tried to enter the home, the Madison officer was shot. We now uh, know the Brandon officer is at a hospital and has been moved to a regular room. Brandon police say they had no prior run ins with Wilson and will have much more coming up tonight at 10 o'clock. Hurricane season starts today in the Atlantic and weather experts have mixed predictions about what to expect this year. Chief Meteorologist Patrick Bigby spoke one on one with the director of the National Hurricane Center to see what they are expecting. Right, yeah, there's yeah, El Nino is not the only factor. It's one of the important ones. But yeah, they're they're above normal water temperatures in a lot of the Atlantic basin, which would on all things being equal, argue for maybe more activity. So it'll be interesting to see how those you know, competing factors, you know, uh, you know uh, interact during the season. Now here in the Pine Belt, we may not take direct impacts from hurricanes, but flooding, winds and hail damage from a hurricane could destroy your home. So instead of trying to decide when to get coverage on your home, act now before the floodwaters come knocking at your doorstep. Our Hannah Hayes tells us more. Hurricane season has officially begun, and one of the last things you need to be worried about is the homeowner's insurance throughout hurricane season. There are several types of home coverage available, and some do not include flood insurance, which is crucial for your home if a hurricane hits. In the state of Mississippi, I require that agents uh, tell someone who's buying a homeowner policy that you do not have flood insurance. As a matter of fact, some of them use a big red stamp on the face of the policy and said you are not covered for flood unless you buy flood insurance, and we've offered it to you. And flood insurance can't be bought just before a hurricane is supposed to hit. You have to act now. you got to buy 30 days before a hurricane occurs, uh, similar to the old federal standards for flood insurance. So you got to buy it early. You just can't wait and buy it the day before a hurricane. And for those who have purchased a normal homeowner's policy, beware. This may not cover everything you need in case of a disaster. Normal homeowner policy in HO3, if you do not live on the coast, will cover wind and hail insurance in addition to fire and casualty. If you live on the Gulf Coast, many uh, insurance riders will not cover wind and hail. Hurricane insurance isn't a single policy. It is a combination of flood, home, and wind insurance. Any other coverage you wish to add will be up to your insurance provider. And there are plenty of companies that offer different policies. Talk to your friends, your neighbors, get advice, call an agent. It's all right to Google and find somebody to call. That's okay to do. And shop around. That's what it's about. It's a competitive market. Uh, rates are a little tight now, but they'll come back down. In the Pine Belt, Hannah Hayes, WDM7, on your side. While ensuring your home is covered, ask your local insurance agent if your vehicle is also protected. And a reminder that you can learn more about hurricane preparedness and our upcoming 30-minute special, Storm Watch. It airs right after this broadcast at 6.30 on WGAM7 NBC.
All right, now turning to Patrick. Patrick, even though hurricane season just started, do we have anything we have to keep an eye on at the moment? Yeah, Carrie, we are watching a system in the Gulf, which has now become a tropical depression. So uh, we're watching that one system again. This is tropical depression number two. Uh, you may be asking, what about number one? Well, technically, number one happened in January. The Hurricane Center did some reanalysis. They found a system they missed. They classified that as number one. So we're starting with number two because of that reason. Tropical depression number two. Uh, this right here is located about 300 miles off the coast of Fort Myers, Florida. Winds are at 35 miles per hour. It's moving west northwest at two miles an hour. And this is going to be drifting off towards the south over the next several days. But again, this is a very hot mess of a system. Not a lot of activity with it. It's it's in a very unorganized state and that's a little bit of good news for us. But it's still hot here. Everybody into the mid 80s and but unfortunately it's going to get hotter by the weekend. We'll talk more about it coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Patrick. Well, the city of Hattiesburg held its first of several splash days for the summer today, starting at Tim's Elementary School. Emily Blackmore saw the fun in the sun firsthand. I'm here over at Thames Elementary School where the city of Hattiesburg has partnered with the Hattiesburg Fire Department to offer a really fun event for kids in the community. Now kids are gathering obviously behind me where they are playing in the sprinkler from the fire truck, running around, playing with their friends and honestly just having an all around fun time. It gives the kids and parents something to do. Uh, it gets us out into the community and allows us to interact, show off the fire truck and let them interact with us and just see what it is we have to offer and then it also allows for this community to gather because most of these people live uh, right nearby. Reporting in Hattiesburg, Emily Blackmore, WDAM7 on your side. All right, thanks Emily. A new museum just opened in the town of Mount Olive. It's devoted to one of the world's most popular soft drinks. Our Charles Harrington tells us about all of the Coca-Cola items you can now see for free at John's Bottle Cap. There's lots to see at John's Bottle Cap. It's a new gallery that's just opened in downtown Mount Olive, and it showcases everything Coca-Cola. Trays, uh, glasses, bottles, pitchers, um, watches, clocks, um, stuffed animals. I never th thought Coke was going to do stuffed animals, but they did. There are more than 700 items here, some new and some old. They were all collected over the last decade by Mount Olive resident John Ross. Perhaps the oldest item in the collection is this delivery truck. It dates back to 1930. I think it's great. I think it'll draw people from all around because I am terribly interested in it and it's awesome, I think. John's Bottle Cap is the second museum to open in Mount Olive in the last six months. Back in November, this museum opened its doors. It's devoted to the late country music singer, songwriter, and Mount Olive native, Billy Ray Reynolds. We had no museums six months now ago. Now we have two. Now you have two. That's so is right. there a theme building on this? <laughs> well, we'd like to have it a theme for the entire town to come back to life. You know, that's what we hope. Um, and if anybody's wanting to put another museum in, they just need to let us know. John's Bottle Cap is open on Thursdays and Fridays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Admission is free. Charles Harrington, WDAM7 on your side. And the nearby Billy Ray Reynolds Museum is open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, also from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. Admission to that museum is also free. Well, this Saturday, it's June 3rd, which means first Saturday is back in Hattiesburg. Downtown businesses will host their own unique events to celebrate, and there's always something new to discover during first Saturday, from special discounts at stores and restaurants to live music. You can find a full list of all the participating businesses online at downtownhattiesburg.com. And the 33rd annual Bay Fest started yesterday, but there's plenty to do today and into the weekend. Tonight is armband night until 10 p.m. And tomorrow is gospel night with five different acts. And Saturday is the day of fun starting at 8 a.m. bright and early. There's a car show, some arts and crafts, and a contest for prizes. Evening concerts start at 5 p.m. Saturday. And all eyes are on the tropics this evening. We're watching tropical depression number two just off the coast, kind of between Panama City and Tampa tonight. Where is it going to go? 
we'll talk about it. Yeah.